The capsizing of the Belmont took its toll on the Tri-State in 1884. Though this may seem insignificant in today's era, this tragedy made headlines in local newspapers. After the loss of 14 lives, the area crumbled with fear and desperation. Throughout time, rivers have been the lifelines of civilizations. Towns, villages, and cities have always naturally grown up along the river. In an era before railroads, cars, trucks, and highways, the rivers have provided the safest, fastest, and easiest way to transport goods and people. Evansville is no exception. Evansville is located where it is because of the Ohio River. Even after railroads were developed, railroad bridges to cross the river were not. As a result, transfer barges were used to transport the railroad cars from one side of the river to the other, from Evansville to Henderson. On an early August morning in 1884, things were seemingly normal. Sun was pushing through the clouds and a steamboat, the Belmont, rocked gently on the waves of the river. The boat, which was recently built, had in tow two barges on which were six railroad cars, two passenger coaches, an express car carrying mail, and three freight cars carrying approximately 60 passengers. The boat also carried 25 to 30 passengers and was manned by a crew of 11. It was a normal day for the pride of the Derlin Perkins fleet. The Belmont stood proudly, waiting to set off for the other side of the river. By the end of the day, 14 passengers had lost their lives in a fatal capsizing of the Belmont. On August 29, 1884, the Belmont departed at 8.05 a.m., taking with it an estimated 20 persons, along with the passenger train of the Ellen Inn Railroad. As Captain John Smith set out with his crew fully prepared for the journey ahead, dark clouds began rolling in from the west. However, he was an experienced captain and didn't think much of the darkening weather. As some of the passengers ate their breakfast in the dining room that was located on the boat's main deck, they were oblivious to the ominous clouds and havoc that would soon occur. At approximately 9 a.m., three and a half miles north of Henderson, Kentucky, the storm that was once looming had struck. Though the powerful winds had shaken the boat, there was no concern. But by the time the reality of the storm overcame the crew, it was too late. Monstrous winds had started to loosen the tying components of the barge to the passenger train, and the boat began to slowly capsize. People scrambled to jump to the fleeing carrier barge for safety. Mothers were sacrificing themselves to save their children, while the crew was attempting frantically to control the boat as it was tipping over towards the dark, murky river. The winds picked up speed and began forming a cyclone. As a gray-colored sky shadowed over the sinking boat, panic was inevitable. How to survive something this tragic was not a normal school lesson. Therefore, the patrons were relying solely on instincts. The crew tried to get passengers to go to the barges in the short amount of time that was available before it was too late. The barge broke loose and drifted to shore. The 60 or so people on board of the cars, including all of the crew except the captain, got away safely. However, some were frozen in fear while watching the doom unravel in front of them. Regardless of their valiant efforts, the dingy river was determined to lure more lives into its watery grave. Among the people that didn't make it out of the water alive, only some of them were from the Evansville-Henderson area. Miss Addie Murray and her six-month-old child were from Brookville, Alabama. She had been visiting friends in Osage, Kansas, and was supposed to meet her husband in Nashville. Her husband arrived as soon as he was sent a telegraph informing him of the disaster that had claimed the lives of his wife and child. He was not the only one who had lost those he loved. Those closer to home were affected more severely by the loss of friends, neighbors, and family members. Matt Lyon suffered the loss of his wife and two daughters, Laura Lyon and Sally Bryan. Laura was the only one who was accounted for before the vessel tipped over. A few seconds before the disaster occurred, E.C. Roach went against the crew's warnings and urgings to get to the barges and went back to find his son, Keen. Roach reached him just as the boat was going over, and they entered the watery grave hand in hand. 
A few more bodies were discovered floating down the Ohio River within a month after the steamboat's downfall. The boat that now lay upturned in the water was a total of 151 feet long with a 25 and a half foot beam. The cylinders were 16 feet in diameter with a six feet stroke and three boilers. For several days, the tugboat Isabella tried to put the boat upright with little to no luck. She remained stuck at the bottom of the river with a few feet of the underside showing above the Ohio's grim waters. The sight of the damage produced a feeling of hopelessness among many of the city. The Belmont was not the only one who felt the blow of the storm as it spread throughout the heart of the city. In the city itself, houses were destroyed and roofs were blown away. Chimneys were knocked over while fences and outhouses lay broken on the ground. Trees that weren't blown over completely had limbs twisted off. The citizens were in a terrified frenzy hearing the sounds of walls crashing down, steeples and chimneys falling, wind roaring, pelting rain, and sudden flashes of thundering lightning. Around 9.05, the storm receded and there were signs of the damage everywhere imaginable. One newspaper headline stated this as, the greatest storm ever known in the history of Evansville. In the sermon conducted in the Presbyterian Church in Henderson for those lost, Reverend J. M. Phillips left these closing words. To you also, my unconverted friend, this appeal comes. It is not a judgment, but a note of warning, saying, Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Soon you will be wrecked in the dark river of death. Its cold waves will roll over you. Its driving tempest will engulf you. Like the storm that struck the Belmont, it will come suddenly, it will come irresistibly, and sweep away the last foundation upon which you stand.